What's up people? In this video, we're going to do another, or we're going to redo this video about how to cure anorexia on your own. Um, I made another video about anorexia, how to cure it on your own, but it was not very helpful. It was really just like me yelling at the camera and being like, the way to cure anorexia is to just not be anorexic, blah. Which, <clears throat> you know, it's kind of true, but like, if you deliver your message in a way that is not graceful, then it will not be received gracefully. Uh, so this is my attempt to just kind of like slide that in there. Or, um, yeah, I don't know if that made sense. Anyway, <clears throat> How to Cure Anorexia on Your Own by Yala Papi or E. Um, so here we go. Okay, why you should or should not listen to me. Um, I am not a doctor. I am not a medical professional. I am not any of those things. So if you're the type of person you need to, you only take recommendations from those people, then it's probably not the video for you. But I have a lot of, I guess, real world experience, or at least I have analyzed 300, over 300 eating disorders slash mukbang slash quote unquote nutrition videos. Um, and when I was, when I was doing these videos, like I, I analyzed these and then uploaded them to YouTube. They're on my channel. You're welcome to watch them if you want. Uh, this was not me just passively watching a video. This was watching the video at the request to somebody who had watched one of my other videos and said, Hey, can you take a look at this video? You know, I'd like to know what you think. Um, <clears throat> so this was me watching them intently with the, uh, intention to give my opinion on them, on what they were doing from like a health standpoint. So what ended up happening is that I noticed that a lot of these people had like really bad habits, despite the fact that they were like ostensibly giving advice to other people, I guess, on, on how to live and how to eat and proper like nutritional habits. Okay. So like, I've, I've seen basically what these people are doing and I can tell you what they're doing wrong and I can tell you what you should change if you are doing what they're doing, which is wrong stuff. Um, I've already successfully quote unquote cured a few people already. I'm going to read you a testimonial soon. Um, I would say that I've helped three people. I've probably helped more to be honest with you, but I can think of three who have like off the top of my head who've reached out to me and told me that I've helped them and fix their problem and blah, blah, blah. Only one of them uh, has like publicly you know, announced that it was me that helped them and cured them and blah, blah, blah. So that is the one that I will be showing. I won't be showing the other ones because I haven't cleared it with them yet. So, you know, if that's enough for you, great. Yeah. If it's not, I totally understand. Uh, the third reason you should or should not listen to me is that I don't, I don't have a vested interest in, in whether or not you, you take my recommendations. Um, I'm not selling any like anorexia tutorial course. I don't have any fitness courses that I sell. Um, I, not doing any like even fitness consulting now it's really just a hobby for me not to say i won't do it in the future but as of right now i'm not doing it so like you know and i'm going to give you all of the methods right now for free anyway so it's not like i'm it's not like a teaser video hiding anything behind a paywall so take it for what it's worth if you're interested go ahead give it a watch accept it with an open mind if not you know plenty of other expert opinions out there for you Okay, so how I became an anorexia expert it was kind of by accident. Um, <clears throat> I've had this channel, been pretty active on it for just under a year at this point. And I, at this specific time in my YouTube career, I was making tip of the day fitness videos, which was basically, I was in, living in Japan. I was literally just walking around my neighborhood in Japan with a selfie stick and like giving my tip of the day. And, um, at some point, somebody asked me to do a to, to watch a Stephanie Buttermore cheat day video, and explain how she was able to stay so lean while eating donuts and pancakes and like doing her like eight thousand calorie cheat day meal. Um, so I watched that video and I gave my opinion on it, and I started getting more requests for other people who were doing mukbangs and cheat days and these like quote unquote what I eat in a day videos. Um, and one thing led to another, I, I didn't have a job at this time, so I had plenty of free time. And I was also kind of like getting into the whole like Gary Vaynerchuk, like create as much content as you can and like figure the rest out later. 
So the combination of these two things is I would do five, six, seven, eight, nine of these reaction videos a day and upload them all in the same day, oftentimes around the same niche, you know, what I eat a day videos uh, or something, you know, similar to that. And uh, averaged out to about five a day, did around 300 in a 60 day period. So during this time, I, I noticed that like a lot of these people were doing, they were making, they were all making the same mistakes somehow as if somebody was, they were getting all of their information from the same source and just making these mistakes on their own because that's essentially what they thought that they should do, um, which in my opinion is not, and I will tell you why later. So for my methods, there is a 100% success rate if you actually do what I say. Uh, like I said, there's at least three people who have been quote unquote cured from my methods. Let's see if I still have this open. Yes, okay, so I posted this on my Facebook page. This is from N. Sandoval, Sandoval. Just wanted to let you know how incredibly grateful I am for your channel. Before your advice, I was going to the gym for four hours at a time, three hours of cardio plus one hour training, and binging on junk all the time. I also fasted for extended periods while doing these four hour workouts. I'd wake up feeling weak and achy, could barely get out of bed, and still pushed myself to go to the gym. I lost my period, never made any progress, and created complete chaos in my life. I was constantly in pain from over-exercising and the bloating. Looks-wise, I was skinny fat with a bit of muscle on me during this time. It was extremely taxing on my body, and I did it seven days a week for one year straight. I was seriously struggling and for some reason never thought of your advice on my own. In my head, there was no way I could stop the cycle. It was compulsive. But of course that would happen because I wasn't eating with a purpose or even attempting to nourish myself. After coming across your channel, I've been doing cardio about two times a week, plus training every day and eating tons of meat and eggs. I've never felt or looked better than I do now. I'm not in pain all the time. I finally have time for my family and friends, and I can confidently say I'll graduate college. I might actually make it, lol, and I owe that to you. By the way, I agree with all the eating disorder comments you made, in case you still feel like an asshole for it. Like you said, if you're telling everyone about your problem and not actively seeking a solution, you simply don't wish to change your life. I would have never thought a YouTuber would become my therapist slash dietitian. Thank you times 100. You have no idea how grateful I am. So, um, you know, that's one person, right? I've gotten a lot of other comments on my videos saying not quite as specifically about how people have implemented some of my suggestions and uh, experience benefits, but obviously that's very vague and I haven't, I don't have like a collection of like quotes from these people to prove to you. Um, but to me, it just seems like common sense. Like it's obvious like that this stuff would work. So I don't know. I probably should gather up some of those quotes at some point. Um, but anyway, like, Regardless, quotes, no quotes, I'm going to give you all the information for free and all of the stuff you can literally test right now if you want. Like, actually, right now, you could go and test and see how you feel and see if it starts working. Okay, so, like, you know, do what you want. Uh, treatment begins working immediately, a few hours, I would say maximum. Benefits are permanent and continue increasing with time until you are quote unquote normal. When I say permanent, they are permanent as long as you continue. Um, with the methods, right? It's not like it's not like they work for a little bit and then stop. If you continue doing them, they will continue working. So it's not like you build a tolerance to them or anything like that. If you do it, it will work. So you know, just keep doing it. And the way that I explain it here is it's it's pretty idiot proof. Maybe there is some nuance, like some little details, some maybe tiny questions that could come up, but there's really not that many moving parts here. And if you do the three basic steps, then like you're, it's gonna work for you. So I, I really, I, I don't know, like I don't know how much simpler I can make it to be honest with you. Okay, now before we get into that, I just wanna say what you think doesn't matter. Okay, I, I, that may like be insulting to your intelligence. You might experience some, some feelings of resistance to that concept, but it's true. I mean, especially when you think about how little you really understand about the world and how it works, um, you'll realize that it actually doesn't matter. Like, for example, like, I highly doubt any of you could make a toothbrush in your home. Like, you, you could not create a toothbrush if you wanted to. As basic as this is, as cheap as it is to buy in the store, this is infinitely more complex than anything that you are probably capable of creating on your own. But does that matter? No, you can still use this to brush your teeth, right? I, I don't need to know how to make a toothbrush to use it. Do you understand? 
um, understanding how the method works does not matter, right? You can still execute the method without understanding how it works. Understanding why you're anorexic, what possible like infinitely complex combination of situations that occurred in your childhood that caused you to have this condition does not actually matter. Um, if you want, if you want to fix it, just follow the steps of the solution and it will fix it. Understanding how a car engine does not work or it works does not matter, right? You can still drive the car, right? You don't need to know about oil and gas and internal combustion engine and transmission fluid and brake fluid and all this stuff in order to drive the car. You get in the car you turn the key, put your foot in the gas, shift into drive, whatever, and you drive. That's it. Um, similarly, understanding why a car goes forward when you press the gas also does not matter. If you want the car to go forward, you just press the gas. That's it. It's the same thing with this. Okay, just, just follow the steps and it will work. Okay, now before we get into that, you should be aware of some of the positive benefits of anorexia and being sick in general. Um, any sort of sickness is romanticized. Well, not any kind of sickness. Getting a little like social commentary-ish on this now, but any like female dominated uh, affliction is romanticized, right? Like, I guess actually, you know, you could say the same about men as well, but like a man's struggle, I feel like is, is less romanticized because men were just less interested in romance in general, in the like sexual sense and also in the societal sense. Um, but anyway, the, the point is that before you make the decision that you're fed up with your condition, and the negative effects of your condition, you have to also admit that there are some benefits to the condition. Okay, you have to admit that because if you want to quote unquote solve your problem or, or change your status, that change in status is going to remove some of these positive benefits that you are used to and that will cause you to experience pain. Okay, it, it only, when it gets to the point where the negatives are far outweighing the positives, where you actually stop and be willing to sacrifice those positives. Okay, I just want to clarify that. Uh, number one, and to be fair, this is this is not to like, maybe it sounds a little patronizing, and I understand like based on my last video, which is extremely patronizing, how you might see it that way. But but this is these are factual statements that are true. So like, and I'm saying them politely. So like you have no you have no right to think they're patronizing. Anyway, friends and family are nicer to you because of your condition. Okay, anybody who has a sick family member. Like, regardless of, of the dynamic there, like, you're nicer to sick people, right? You take better care of them, you're nicer to them, you pamper them a little bit, right? Possibly, you know, they might even fully deserve it. Maybe they're in a car accident, right? Maybe, you know, they, whatever, fucking, like, cement block fell on their head and they're fucking whatever. It doesn't matter. Maybe they deserve it, right? Maybe... When I say maybe they deserve it, maybe I mean, maybe what I mean is that maybe their affliction is not intentional, like anorexia is. It is intentional. Like, sorry. Um, you're going to be nicer to them, okay? So, like, you have arguably gotten used to that positive attention from people for being sick. You're going to have to give that up when you're not sick anymore. Um, you might have access to a therapist who will listen to your problems without any threat of exposing you for being human really is what it is. I was going to say insane, but like we're all kind of insane really. Um, if you have anorexia, right. Or whatever your depression, like whatever problem you have, you can go pay and see a therapist and tell them about your problems and how, you know, this person said this to you and that person said that to you and it made you triggered you and blah, blah, blah. It's just like victim culture. And you can go and you can talk to this person and expose all of your weaknesses, which is, kind of pleasurable in some way to like admit that you're weak even even for people who are not weak like we all kind of like really like secretly wish to like expose our vulnerabilities in a safe space um and when you are sick and you can go and do that as a, as a to a therapist it's uh it's hard to give that up um you get access to a social club of other sick people who will validate your choices. Okay, so again, if you're anorexic and you're in anorexia support groups and anorexia Facebook groups and anorexia fucking, you know, 
anonymous groups like you're going to go to these groups and you're going to sit there and it's the same as like therapy like you get to go and you get to talk about all the decisions you made and how bad your life is and all these problems that you have and all of these people will sit there and nod approvingly and say they're there it's okay god forbid you have a youtube channel and you talk about these things but um you get to be a member of a club and if you if you're not a member of any other clubs and you join a club and this is the first club that like fully accepts you um you know it, it might be hard to want to leave that club so you have to be conscious of that uh you get an automatic argument winner in situations of discomfort okay this is like crying in an argument kind of i was going to say for girls but really if you're a guy and you start crying in an argument like you're probably going to win that argument too um it's just that girls are, are quicker to cry like quicker to turn on the tears and like win because it's if a guy cries it's like okay this is this is really bad like what's going on here why is this happening but if a girl cries it's like ugh, all right do i really want to like lay down the like iron fist of discipline now and like you know despite these tears or is it easier to just be like okay fine you're right just like stop crying go away um and finally everyone expects less of you because you're sick okay so this is not a fully positive like there are negatives to these benefits as well okay to, to make that clear um but life is you know there's a lot of pressure in life and it's very refreshing it's very relaxing to kind of have a lot of that pressure removed because you have a condition and it's not like you know let's compare it to like not having any legs right if you don't have any legs like it's different P people see that and they're not they're already not going to like ask you to do certain things or expect certain things of you because you have a, it's visible and it's irreversible you could make the argument okay but if you have something like anorexia or bulimia or some eating disorder or depression you can kind of like you can play that card so to speak be like oh not to say like my anorexia is acting up but like oh i'm feeling lightheaded i can't and they're like oh right this person like starves themselves like they get lightheaded sometimes if you don't want to whatever do something okay so like to be fair i'm not saying everybody who's anorexic like they always play these cards all the time and they're secretly evil people who try to like shirk responsibility um but you have to understand that like these are options that you have and there are benefits that exist even if you keep your problem a secret okay it does not mean that like just because you you don't go to therapy and you haven't actually told anybody that uh that you're not experiencing these benefits because you know in your head you know what i mean and to be fair if you're like severely fucking skeletonish people are gonna know it's obvious like you're not fooling anybody Okay, so quick note about going all in with Stephanie Buttermore thing or Kayla Kateki and all this stuff. Um, going all in is basically where you remove any sort of restriction from what you eat entirely. And you're just like, I'm going to eat whatever I want as much as I want until I feel like, until I don't want to do that anymore. Um, is retarded for several reasons. Number one, completely, completely ignores proper food choice. The, the whole thing about all in is it's done for one reason, which is to, and I wrote this at the bottom, it got kind of cut off, is to desensitize yourself to to eating okay anorexic people are afraid to eat they're like scared to eat they have like an eating aversion um but that's only one small part of the entire puzzle so when you say like okay go ahead just eat whatever you want the real the real what that really tells me is that the people who are behind this all-in thing they have absolutely no idea what to do because if they knew they would not say go ahead eat whatever you want they would say eat these specific things that will make you not want to be anorexic anymore that's it right it's like the the whole thing about going all in is that you are you are giving people free reign to be creative and come up with their own solution and like hoping that eventually someday they will arrive at the correct conclusion which implies that you have no fucking idea what the correct conclusion is what the correct instructions are for solving the problem that's what it implies okay because if you did you'd come up with a step-by-step -step formula similar to the one that i'm about to explain to you in this video on how to actually do it yeah actually i know okay me of all people it's me i know follow me anyway <clears throat> it completely ignores proper food choice okay you have to understand that you will feel differently like just just like uh, 
it, 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 it's strange to me, boggles my mind to think that there are people out there who somehow either do not acknowledge or are not aware of the fact that eating 10 donuts will make you feel differently than eating 16 ounce steak that will make you feel differently than eating three eggs and a fucking, I don't know, bagel with cream cheese and a, a cup of orange juice. Like all of these foods will make you feel different when you eat them. Okay, some of these foods, in the broad sense, okay, will make you more uh, susceptible to engaging in anorexic behavior, and some of them will not. It's just a matter of figuring out which ones will do that and which ones will not. However, the problem with going all in is that it makes no like indi- like it gives no instructions that that is actually what you should do. They just say eat as much as you want, whenever you want, and like you know, when you feel like stopping, like call me for your next fucking session. Okay, second one, puts no restrictions on calories or macros, okay? It should be obvious why, why this is not good. Like, it's, it's using a sledgehammer to kill a fly, right? And not even any guarantee that you'll actually kill a fly. It's actually, you know what it is? It's like blowing up your house to kill a fly, right? And then by the time you blow up the house, like, there's not even guarantee. Like, the fly might have, like, already flown away, you know? And then you gotta, like, find the fly in its next house and try and blow up that house. Um... The idea with going all in is to like not feel bad about eating and not feel bad about being hungry. And hopefully along the way, you'll figure out how to eat foods that will keep you full. Which, spoiler alert, let me fucking tell all of you right now what that is. It's like eating meat and eggs. That's it. Those, those are the foods that will like solve all your problems. Uh, number three, it doesn't mention exercise. So, you know, the whole thing with like going all in is like, go ahead, exercise if you want. But because you're sensitive to a little snowflake and like exercise to you probably means like nine hours on the elliptical and like obsessively like pacing around your room to burn those extra calories probably just don't exercise at all because we have no idea what to actually tell you to do specifically to like give you instructions for proper exercise so we're just not going to tell you anything or tell you not to do it okay and then like i said it only addresses the nutritional aspect of anorexia which what i mean is it only addresses the like fear of eating aspect of it, um, not really the nutritional aspect. It doesn't actually address the nutritional aspect at all. It just says eat whatever you want as much as you want every time you want. No bueno. Okay, so literal definition of anorexia. I should have wrote intentionally, but it's intentionally consuming fewer nutrients than your body requires for normal and therefore optimal performance. And I should have I should have put this in brackets, all parentheses, whatever. Anyway. This is the literal definition of the behavior that an anorexic person engages in, okay? If you look up the definition of anorexia in the dictionary or in the medical journal, it will say probably something like, you know, the person looks in the mirror and they think that they look fat, so they don't eat enough food and, you know, end up starving themselves, something like that. There's this whole idea of like people not, I know this is body dysmorphia, fine. There's a lot of overlap. Right? These people think they're fat, so they starve themselves, really, is what it is, okay? I've written here, consuming fewer nutrients, blah, 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 to try and like make it sound official. But really, like let's, let's simplify this further. You look in the mirror, you think you're fat, so you don't eat, right? You would think that the solution to that would to be like somehow convince yourself that you're actually not fat. But that's not it. We'll talk about that later. But the point is that when you explain things with their literal definition, when you explain things in literal terms, when you clearly define what a behavior is by the actions that the person is taking, it becomes much easier to solve the problem. Okay, for example, if you say anorexia is a mental disease that has no cure, requires years of treatment, and has a 10% success rate, and nobody knows how it occurs or why it occurs. There's no solution for that. You're never going to find a solution. If you do, it'll be by pure luck. Okay. However, if you define it as saying anorexia or the behavior that an anorexic person participates in is intentionally consuming fewer nutrients than their body requires for normal and optimal performance, then the solution is very clear. It is to consume enough nutrients or extra nutrients or, or just enough nutrients, really. Okay, so anorex people undereat calorically. They eat virtually no nutrients dense food. So not only are they eating under maintenance, but when they do eat, they choose to eat what I have called bird food instead of nutrient dense food. 
What is bird food? Okay, I, I came up with this term like when I was watching all of these like what I eat in a day videos and I was just like, this is all bird food, really is what it is. There's no substance to this. None of these girls would eat meat. None of these girls would eat eggs. The one exception that I can think of off the top of my head is um, Gabby Hanna. Gabby Hanna ate meat for every single meal. And to be fair, when I watched, like originally, so I, I used to say good things about Kayla Kotecki before she started coaching Stephanie Buttermore on this all in nonsense. Because I watched one Kayla Kotecki video where she talked about how she overcame her eating disorder. And she said in the video, she's like, I started eating more meat and eggs. I was like, oh my God, fuck, this girl like actually gets it. However, any like clips I've seen of her and Stephanie Buttermore, I haven't watched any of her other videos since then, no mention of meat or eggs. It's all this like, just remove your restrictions and eat whatever you want. Like conveniently forgetting or ignoring that like when she started to feel better, there were several specific actions that were taken before that happened, specifically eating meat and eggs. Okay, and bird food, once again, is anything that is not meat or eggs. I'm not saying you can never eat this food. I'm not saying it's bad to eat this food, but I'm saying that if you eat this food to the exclusion of all else and you do not eat meat and eggs, you will, like, it's not hard to be anorexic. Why? Because you eat fucking all these, like, like you eat a couple of rice cakes, it doesn't fill you up. You're like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. But if I eat any of the other shitty food on this list, I'm just going to get hungrier and hungrier and hungrier you know, I guess fatter and fatter. Um, I'm not going to feel good. Really what it is is that they're just not going to feel good. And they're just going to want to keep eating. Okay. Anorexia is like, um, kind of the other end of the spectrum of, of binge eating, right? Bin people who have binge eating disorder or like people who binge eat frequently. I hate the term disorder. Anyway, people who binge eat frequently, they try to like quote unquote, fix their hunger by eating more and more. Right, because they'll eat a little bit, they'll feel guilty, they'll eat more, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm starting my diet next week, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want. Anorexic people, they have, <clears throat> they have done that before, and now they just stop themselves from even starting. So they don't eat anything, they eat like a tiny little bit of something. Okay, why you are allowed to be anorexic, or why anorexia is even like capable of existing in this world. Um, number one, survival is virtually guaranteed. There's no risk of you, very little risk of you being murdered or robbed or raped or like any of this stuff. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's definitely not like it was even a couple hundred years ago. So we have the luxury to malnourish ourselves really, which is what this is. We have the luxury to malnourish ourselves. Um, because we're probably not going to die anyway. And if we get any like serious health problems, just go to the doctor. Uh, physical activity is also not mandatory. Okay. When you are intentionally malnourishing yourself and your energy levels are low and you're, let's say a girl and, and you don't need to pick berries and take care of babies and like do all the stuff that girls actually did a thousand years ago that we like biologically evolved to do. Um, there's no, there's no downside really of, of being anorexic other than like feeling bad all the time, which most people feel bad all the time anyway. So like, who cares? Um, and visible signs of illness are romanticized by other sick people. Okay. This is a major one. It's a whole like crab bucket mentality, right? If you have anorexia, if you have an eating disorder, you're like a hero, right? It's like, if you get breast cancer, you're a hero. Like, I, I don't know. To me, that just sounds retarded. Like you have an illness, you're a hero. Why? Because you would think like, I understand the reasons because people are sick, they're in pain. You don't want to shame them or make them feel bad about it, right? Because then they'll just feel even worse. And it's our natural desire as a human being to, to comfort people who feel bad. It's just the problem is that some people take it too far. And now instead of like maybe taking corrective action with an intelligently thought out solution to fix the actual problem, all of a sudden now these people are having praise heaped on them for being a survivor and being a trooper and like being brave. I'm sorry, you're brave for eating a fucking hamburger? Give me a break. Like, no, you're not. You should be eating fucking hamburgers anyway. Like you want a gold star because you had some steak? I, I guess like you should positively reinforce behaviors that people should be taking. But, you know, do it in a way that actually makes them do it more, I guess. Like, 
I'll go over this in another slide. But making the right choices is its own reward, right? Which is why this actually works and why it's so easy and why it doesn't need to be sold or marketed. Because making the right choices, choosing the right decisions when it comes to health is a reward in and of itself that in my opinion is, is way stronger than some sick people in a Facebook group like telling you how brave you are for, you know, staying at work when you fainted in the bathroom because you haven't eaten in three days. Anyway, most important part, you're not willfully choosing to put your body through physical exertion. If you were, will, in a, physical exertion, again, like I said, I'm not talking about cardio. I'm not talk, talking about pacing around your room for hours um, you know, to burn those extra calories. I'm talking about like lifting weights is the best uh, representation of what we have of it in our society, I guess. We're playing a sport, but like, no, who plays sports really? Um, because when, when you lift weights and when you play sports, if you are not fueled with the right food, you will suffer. And those several hours of suffering through practice, like actual suffering, not, not the suffering of training in a sport, which is uh, exertion, right? Like there's two things, like people exercise and it's, 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 you're pushing your comfort zone when you exercise, okay? But there's a difference between pushing your comfort zone when you exercise and exercising after eating an entire pizza. Okay, which I guess you could say is like pushing your comfort zone, but one is painful and will get you a very poor result over the long term, even the short term. And one is comparatively pleasurable and will get you even better results by far in the long term and short term. Okay, so speaking of exercise, let's talk about exercise and anorexia. Okay, anorexic people, they focus way too much on the mirror and possibly the scale, right? Like <laughs> funny story. Not really a funny story. Oh, and not not how they feel. Okay, I uh, I dated this girl once, friend of, of my cousin actually, and um, it's probably a bad story to tell in this video. I'm gonna tell it anyway though. Uh, this particular cousin, anyway, whatever. This this friend, we started dating, and we had a lot in common. Uh, she was like my cousin's best friend, and I had just come back to America, and like we hit it off like really well like right away to the point where you could make could have made the argument that we were like appropriate for each other to the point where even after like a, a couple dates our families or my family was already like making jokes about like getting married and stuff like that it was a couple years ago um anyway after a date she came back to my apartment and we're like we're just hanging out whatever and she's like she's like how tall are you I told her, I was like, oh, I'm like six feet, maybe like six feet, half an inch, a little bit more. She's like, really? I was like, yeah, why? And she's like, oh, wow, that's like that's like way shorter than guys I normally date. I think I've told this story before, actually. I was like, oh, yeah? And she's like, yeah, I normally date guys who are like six four, six five. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, and I go, how much do you weigh? And she's like, she's like, I weigh like 102. And I was like, oh, she was super skinny. She's like, 102, really? And she's like, yeah, why? And I was like, oh, well, I normally date girls who are under 100 pounds. And she's like, oh, my God, really? Are you serious? Like, she, she thought I was being serious. Um, and uh, she sent me a text. She actually ended up leaving after that. She sent me a text a couple days later and ended up, like, um, breaking up with me. She's like, yeah, you know, you said some inappropriate things. I think we should see other people, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, it turns out she was like, has a fucking eating disorder. I didn't know this. Um, and... Uh, I don't remember why I started telling this story, but um, she looked good. I don't know. Anyway, anorexic people focus too much on the mirror, okay, and not how they feel. And the scale, oh, that's why, the scale, right? Because she was like, that 100-pound thing was like, I don't know, a big deal for her. Uh, wait a minute, right? Um, yeah, so like, they, they make the sacrifice. A, a, a good example is Eugenia Cooney, right? I saw a thumbnail of her like new video and it's like an update on how I'm feeling. Like I don't even need to watch the video. I see that she doesn't look healthy at all. Uh, like skeleton levels of like health, like not, not good. Like I, I made a video on uh, this girl, Lily something. Like I think I got set up actually because I, I ended up making this video. Somebody requested that I do this video like two or three weeks after she actually died. So I did this video of this girl and I saw it and she was like in the worst condition that I'd ever seen any of these like eating disorder people. I was like, damn, this girl like needs help now or she's going to die. And I made, I even mentioned that she was like going to die in the video. I found out later that she actually did die. Somebody left me a comment 
And I was like, man, I feel pretty bad actually. But she had already died and I made the video. And then a couple weeks later or months later, even, um, I guess this video got circulated in a Facebook group that she was part of. And all of these like Facebook anorexic girls like came to the video and left mean comments and like disliked the video, said you're a bad person, threatened to report me to YouTube, and blah, blah, blah. But um, like if, if you don't focus on how you feel, then you're not going to like win. Okay. And it's not only like focusing on how you feel, it's focusing on how you feel in intensely stressful situations, such as strenuous exercise. Okay. So if you're just sitting at home doing nothing or streaming, I guess you Eugenia could use a streamer or something, or she make plays video games or something. If you're just sitting there clicking on your keyboard and mouse and talking, that's not very physically strenuous. Okay. That's, that's like one step above like, watching TV. But if you're like lifting weights at the gym and you're deadlifting and you're squatting and you're running, and you're like doing all this physical shit, that's a much more strenuous test that will clearly reveal if you feel good while doing those things. And if you do not, then it's a sign you need to improve your nutrition by eating meat and eggs. Talk about that later. Um, and increase like, you know, the strength of your muscles. Okay, anorexic people, if they do exercise, they don't do enough weight training and they do way more cardio than they should. I mentioned this, the girl in the testimonial, she said she did four hours of cardio or three hours of cardio. And they think the path to attractiveness is paved with cardio, not proper nutrition and resistance training, which is what it is paved with. Okay, and then I said here, I think I got cut off, but cardio is like dessert, save it for last and just enough so you don't feel awful. Oops, shit. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. How to cure anorexia in three steps. Surprise, surprise. It's the exact same thing I say in every single video. Eat mostly meat and eggs. Do resistance training with medium or heavy weight three to six times a week and eat once a day at night before going to bed. Uh, to be honest with you though, and, and these, these steps for anorexia specifically should be done in this order. Um, although you could make, you could do all these things in the same day. It's fine. Um, <laughs> This is, these are the same recommendations I give for every single video, really, because this this is the solution on how to be healthy. Okay, like I I need to brand this diet and make a fucking DVD set because like this would be the end of all diets. This would actually be the end of it. Like no more cleanse, no more Beach Body, no more Atkins, no more of this like retarded shit. What's what's the the fat keto guy? What's his name? Larry something? Not Larry. Whatever, the fat keto guy who like eats butter weighs like 350 pounds. It's like the keto spokesperson. Anyway, none of that shit. Like this right here, the poppy diet, like cure for anorexia, cure, cure for bulimia, cure for being fat, like cure for being skinny fat. This is it right here. This is it. Like mark my words. Fucking stamp my intellectual property on it right now. You eat mostly meat and eggs. You do resistance training with weights or you play a sport or something. And you eat once a day at night before going to bed. Okay, I'll, I'll explain in the future slides why each one of these is good. Um, and, you know, at the bottom here I wrote, these will fix most people's health problems, obesity, fucking diabetes, like whatever it is, it will fix it. And to be fair, like further than that, there, there are no health problems that are not diet related. Like... Anytime somebody comes to me with a health issue and they say, oh, what do I do about this? I say, okay, are you eating mostly meat and eggs? Are you doing resistance training? And are you limiting your eating frequency? If the answer to that is no, and I get, I get sometimes people message me on Instagram, they're like, hey, can you help me? Can you answer this question for me? And I'll tell them, I'm like, are you, are you doing these three things? If they say no, then I'll say, okay, do these three things and then come back to me in a month and let me know if you still have a problem. Actually. Okay, step one eating mostly fresh meat and eggs for the billionth time. Eating fresh meat and eggs will cause you to get full faster. All right, now I know like before we get into this, like anorexic people, like what is your problem? Your problem is that you're not eating, okay? Your, your problem is that you're actually not eating. So what is the solution? <coughs> Sorry, I'm sick, I'm sick. The, the solution is to actually eat, okay? That's what you have to do, all right? You are anorexic, not because you are not eating. You are not eating is the problem, okay? The, the problem is not that you think you're fat. That's not the problem. The problem is that you are not eating. Like that girl, Lily, whatever her name is, that died, her problem was not that she thought she was fat, okay? Her problem was that she did not consume enough nutrients to maintain 
a like status of being alive. Okay, if you're anorexic, that is your problem. Okay, so when you eat mostly fresh meat and eggs, you will not have that problem. Okay, don't eat bird food. All right, I, look, I don't care. You you want to like limit your portions? Fine, eat a piece of meat. Just eat that. Really, don't eat a fucking piece of a rice cake. Like, what's wrong with you? Anyway, fresh meat and eggs will cause you to get full faster, say it cause you to stay full longer, cause you to feel more satisfied with your meal, and supply your body with all the essential nutrients it needs to operate at an effective level of like being alive and not like fainting, you know, on your way, whatever, like fainting, period. It'll give you lots of energy throughout the day, it'll improve your mood, skin, hair, and overall level of health, like you know, makeup is great, but it's it's meant to like accentuate your features, not not cover bad skin that you have from eating shitty food or, um, you know, hair extensions, for example. Like if your hair is falling out because you're malnourished intentionally, anyway, whatever, just getting distracted. Uh, most importantly, fresh meat and eggs are virtually guaranteed to be unprocessed, sugar-free, and minimally tainted with industrial chemicals. You can't argue that that's not true with like all the antibiotics that are fed to uh, livestock, but to like sum up my recommendation for meat and eggs, the positives outweigh the negatives. Okay, it's a net positive to eat mostly fresh meat and eggs. If you are anorexic and vegan and vegetarian, you're like, uh, you're fucked basically you have no hope there's no hope for you really you're, you're never going to solve it so get used to it like pencil in you know an early death by 40 something years old and you know sorry i feel bad for the animals too i love animals but i also love being alive i love being alive more than i love animals so i'm going to try and extend that as long as possible really um it's your choice that you have to make and I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that what you think does not matter, okay? You can agree or disagree with what I've said, but the fact remains that if you do what I tell you to do, you will get the result that I'm telling you that you're going to get. If you don't believe me, you're welcome to try it on your own. Like, do whatever you want. I don't care. Like, you could think, oh, science says that there was a study that said red, red meat is bad or meat is bad. But that wouldn't work because I know somebody that ate meat and they were still anorexic. Or your video is like shitty quality, so I don't trust you. Or I've never heard of you, you're not a doctor, you're not a medical professional, so your, your argument is invalid. Um, the bottom line is that if, if you do what I tell you to do, like let's, let's take an anorexic person, let's, let's pretend we have Mr. S Ms., Ms. Salty, Ms. Salty the anorexic person. Okay, Ms. Salty, let's just say, let's just say that Ms. Salty follows my protocol and she eats one meal a day. She eats meat and eggs mostly for that meal and she does resistance training three to four times a week and she doesn't obsessively do cardio and she does everything that I tell her to do. Do you think Ms. Salty will still be anorexic? Do you think it is possible for her to continue to be anorexic, anorexic when she's following all of my instructions exactly? for the rest of her life until she dies? Is that possible? Let's say yes. Let's say she's still anorexic. She's still anorexic, but guess what? She's at a healthy weight. Her body looks amazing. She has plenty of energy. Like, I, I, should, I should have, like, how, how technical do you want to get? You know, all of you, like, eating disorder, like, veteran zealots out there. Okay, fine. She won't be cured because nobody's ever cured, but she will never have another symptom as long as she lives and her health will be vastly improved. Okay, but she's not cured. Fine. Whatever. Anyway, bottom line, you tried your way, it didn't work. Try my way. Step two, resistance training. Now, resistance training is important. Everybody should do it. Like, I'm going to tell you why you should do it, but seriously, like, it's almost 2020. Do, do I need to tell you why resistance training is good? Like, do you, do you have a good reason for not doing it? I mean, I, one guy left me a comment. I'm not sure exactly who it is, but he's got some birth defects where his heart doesn't pump blood properly or something, and he can't lift more than 50 pounds. Fine. That guy gets a pass. But, like, you're a normally functioning human being with 
proper use of your internal, internal organs and arms and legs, you can do resistance training, right? Lift weights, it's good for you. Oh. Um, what will it do? Improve your body composition, make you more attractive, make you more physically fit, make you stronger, make you more flexible. It'll raise your basal metabolic rate so that you burn more calories when you're at rest. It'll make you feel really good all the time. And when you feel really good all the time, you won't need to make yourself feel better by starving yourself. Because if you think about it, why why do anorexic people not eat, right? It's it's um, it's a cycle, okay? You you look at yourself, let's say, in the mirror or look at some, there's, there's some, something that triggers you to think I'm fat. Okay, you experience that trigger, and to alleviate the pain, you don't eat. Okay, and then that act of not eating alleviates the pain. That's that's the cycle here, right? But when you feel really good from exercising, it's you're able to balance out the pain or or to completely negate it altogether. Um, and again, like I said, you want to take my word for it, or you don't want to take my word for it. Fine, but these are all things that are easily testable. Like you, you can go join, like spend ten dollars. Join a gym. Like, do you want me to pay for Planet Fitness for you for a week or a month? Like, I will pay the $20 for you. Leave me a comment. You want me to pay the fucking $20 for you for Planet Fitness? Leave me a comment. I will send you $20 in PayPal so you can join a fucking gym. Go put some shoes on. You go do resistance training for a week and try it and see how much better you feel as a result. And see that you won't even feel like you need to fucking restrict and you're going to actually going to want to eat because you feel so good and you know you just like instinctively naturally feel that eating will will be good for you as a result of lifting the weights also when you lift weights or do resistance training you improve your overall health mood hair skin nails ability to break down food and it will overall make you a better person when you are healthier and you are in a better mood and you feel better and you look better you will be a better person to <coughs> to the people in your life, okay? And when you are a better person to the people in your life, you'll improve their lives. And if you care about the people who are in your life, then you owe it to them to improve their lives. I feel like this is a big problem with anorexic people is that they're so inwardly focused. They're so focused on themselves. It's all about me, 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 me. I'm an anorexic, I have a mental disorder. This is my problem. They only fucking care about themselves. Like they're parasites, really, sorry everyone, but like, I'm sure you have good intentions and maybe this isn't fair to paint everybody with this brush but like it's not all about you you know you like th think about it like this you owe it to the people in your life to be a healthy person so you can take better care of them and you can help them because as bad as you think it is i promise you everybody walks around in the same state of like overall general feelings of not feeling good all the time unless you're a salesperson then you have a lot of uh experiences throughout the day where you feel really good like when you make a sale one of the good things about kiosk sales. Anyway, resistance training will also teach you the value of hard work. <clears throat> not that like obsessively doing cardio is not hard work, um, assuming that you are an exercising anorexic person, but okay, doing a lot of cardio is hard also. You're just working hard on the wrong thing, okay? Shift, shift your focus to working hard instead of on cardio to working hard on weight training. And I promise you, you will see a massive increase in the quality of the way you feel. Okay, so steps one and two are a natural punishment reward system. Um, exercise is not fun for most people because most people have shit eating habits and they have deconditioned muscles. And when you have shitty eating habits, even if you have conditioned muscles, when you have shitty eating habits, your exercise sessions are going to be painful because you do not have the right fuel to give your body enough energy to exercise effectively. Um, you'll, and you could even get things like stomach ache, headache, you have less energy. You just, it, it's a natural punishment. You don't believe me? Test it, like actually test it. Like go eat some eggs and then go for a run and then go eat some pizza and go for a run. Try it for like a week straight. Like, you know, Again, I'm not sure, I think I said it in this video, but like, are, are there people out there who actually believe that there will be a difference, that you will feel differently from eating a bunch of eggs as opposed to a bunch of pizza? Do you, do you not think that that will make you feel differently? Like one, one will make you feel better as opposed to worse in the long term, and maybe you feel better in the short term eating the pizza. I love pizza, don't get me wrong, 
But I know that if I eat that pizza, I'll feel good for 15 minutes while I eat the pizza. And then I'll feel bad for eight hours while I'm digesting the pizza. And I'll feel bad for longer while I'm like burning off the extra fat that the pizza has stored on my body. Whereas if I eat the eggs, okay, fine. I'll feel like decent, I guess, while I'm eating the eggs with some hot sauce or something. And then I'll feel amazing for the rest of the day and the rest of my life because I won't gain unnecessary weight from eating processed shit. So training with the right food is a punishment and or a reward. Okay, why is this important for anorexic people? Because if you are anorexic, you generally probably do not have, um, you're probably not exercising, really. You have shit eating habits and you're not exercising. So not only are you providing your body with poor fuel sources, but you are not demanding enough from your body to reveal how poor those food sources are, right? Like you have a car, let's say a simple example, you have a car and you put it on a NASCAR track and you give it shitty fuel and it's a shitty car, it's gonna fucking burn out halfway around the track, okay? But unless you put it on the track and you push it to the max, you're not gonna know that it's a shitty car. Just fucking putt-putt around from your house to the supermarket, to your friend's house, to school, wherever you go, to work, whatever. Okay, so you need to put your body through um, a strenuous test in order to reveal what its weaknesses are. And surprise, surprise, most people's, people's weaknesses are improper nutrition. And you know, conditioning, but that's something you build over time. Okay, so at the bottom here I wrote, you need both and both you need both high quality nutrition and strenuous exercise and both of them are easier to include in your life when you include both of them in your life right so it's it's easier to include strenuous exercise in your life when you have high quality foods that you're eating and vice versa it's it's easier to eat high quality foods when you are exercising does that make sense because if you don't you'll feel like shit step three eating once a day um this is overall like a good guideline for people. For anorexic people specifically, the issue is that you need to install the prop or you need to install good rules. Okay, you don't, you, your rules are shit, which is why you're anorexic. Your beliefs are bad, your rules are bad. And really at the end of the day, it's it's your behavior that's bad. Okay, it's, it's anorexia is a description of uh, inefficient behavior with regards to nutrition. That, that's really what it is. Um, so ultimately what you need to do is change your behavior, which a lot of people, self-included, like to say is a result of your beliefs, which is what most of this video is about, to be fair, but just trust the process and fucking eat once a day, okay? Because it will at least give you some structure. Um, and discipline. And I know you might think you are disciplined with what you're doing now if you're anorexic. You're like, well, I'm disciplined. I only eat three sesame seeds a day and have like, you know, I drink lots of water. Um, and I don't know, I, I like I only have two rice crackers for dinner. That's discipline because I really want to eat three rice crackers. I really want to eat that extra rice cracker. So like I'm disciplined because I don't eat it and I'm fucking starving and like look like shit and feel like shit. Not that kind of discipline. Okay. I, w I will say that if you are anorexic, you probably have more discipline than like a binge eater, for example, but you have discipline for the wrong things. Okay. If I make it like, if I'm disciplined, if I want to discipline myself to jerk off 20 times a day, wow, good for me. That's an accomplishment, but that's discipline for the wrong thing. Like why don't I have discipline for like writing a book or learning a language or like doing push-ups or something else, something, something positive. Okay. So when you eat only one meal a day, you will, you know that you will confine your eating time to that one time, which will allow you, and this is very important for anorexic people. This will allow you to eat as much as you want in one meal without worrying about gaining weight. Okay. Do 23, one, 23 hours fasted. It can be as fucking anorexic as you want during those 23 hours. And then have one hour of pig out time and eat what, well, don't eat whatever you want. Eat mostly meat and eggs. And then once you stuff yourself on meat and eggs, because you'll naturally feel full, you'll naturally be like, oh God, I, I cannot eat any more meat and eggs, but I would like some popcorn or, but I would like a fucking donut or I would like, I don't know, some chips or something or all of the above. Go ahead, eat them. And once that hour's up, stop eating. When you are fasted, okay, you will, your body will burn stored fat throughout the day. Okay, this is glucagon versus insulin. 
Glucagon is like the opposite of insulin, right? It's a hormone your body releases, puts you in fat burning and also muscle burning mode, right? Catabolic versus anabolic, which is what insulin will put you in. Um, don't worry about that. I don't even know why I wrote that. It's just going to confuse you. Just fucking eat once a day. Uh, also, eating once a day will impress your friends and family and make the haters jealous that you have a high metabolism when you smash three plates of food in front of them and you still stay skinny and you still stay lean and you still stay jacked. Okay. And they're like, how did you do that? Oh my God. I can't believe you're so skinny. You just have a high metabolism. I wish I had your metabolism. Yeah, bro. It's because I haven't eaten in 23 hours. And this is like the first food that I put in my mouth since the same time yesterday. And meanwhile, I just like crushed a workout and ran for 45 minutes. Yeah. You'd be hungry too, if you did that. And you'd also look like this if you did that, but you know, it's too convenient, right? For people. Anyway, most importantly, it's a simple and effective rule. It's easy to follow. Like all of the other steps, they're simple and effective and can be explained on a fucking t-shirt. Eat once a day, eat most of me eggs, and go to the fucking gym. Yes, it really is that easy, okay? You don't want to believe that's that easy. Women always want to make things more complicated than they are, especially women who love to play the victim. I'm, I'm sorry, really. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm like coming down on you hard like this, but like, and it's not only women, to be fair. There are guys who are anorexic as well. Okay, I know. Um, but look, again, if we take a look at this from a literal description, okay, what is anorexia? What is the literal behaviors that are occurring here that are negative that we want to change? What, what brick, where if we pull that brick out of the wall, the entire wall will come crumbling down? Okay. You want to watch that video, Lily something, where she died? Okay. What, what, why did she die? Why did she die? Straight up. Like, sorry to like speak ill of the dead, but like, why did that person die? Because she did not eat. That is why. She did not eat enough nutrient dense food and she died because her body could not sustain life anymore on a diet of nothing. She died, I think, at like 22, 23 years old. She looked like at least twice that, in my opinion. Sorry. Again, no disrespect. Take that as an example, right? Don't let her death be in vain. But, um, you know, the, the, the brick we want to pull out of the wall is the malnourishment. Okay. Forget about, I think I look fat. I think I'm this, I think I'm that. Like if you're anorexic, you know, you're fucking anorexic. Okay. And if you know you're anorexic and you accept my definition of it, which is a description of the behavior, which is intentionally consuming a lo vastly lower quantity of nutrients that your body needs to operate effectively. And all you need to do is just up it, just increase it by eating fucking meat and eggs. That's it. You want to know? Here, here's the, the breakdown of the video in one sentence. How to cure anorexia? Eat meat and eggs. That's it. Eat as much meat and eggs as you can. I might even put this at the beginning of the video. I might even edit this video and put it at the beginning. Please watch the entire video anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna, I might do that. We'll see. Um, yeah, what else is there on here? We make things more complicated than we need to be. I said that we deny the positive benefits we experience from our problems. Yes, that is also true. That's why I put that slide in there because we do that, you know, we do like, I've got fucking problems. Everybody's got problems. Like one of my problems right now, I can't stay in the same place, right? This year I've been in I don't even know how many times I've been in an airport. I don't know how many times I've like packed up my shit and moved to a different apartment. 10 maybe in a year. That's insane. This year I've lived in Thailand like three times, Vietnam twice, Japan. Now I'm in America. I was in Indonesia. It's hard, right? To you, you think maybe, oh, wow, that's so cool. Like you're in Indonesia, you know, you're in Bali, you're in Thailand, you're in all these places. And there are some positive benefits to that, but there's also negatives, right? It's hard. It's not easy. I don't want to fucking live out of a backpack anymore. I have to shoot videos with shitty lighting. You know, there's only so much shit you can take with you in a backpack. Um, but there's a lot of positives. I get to spend a lot of time on beaches. I get to meet a lot of interesting people. I get to travel. I get to see the world. Other people are tied down. So you, you have to, you have to acknowledge that there's positive aspects to it as well, despite the fact that you see it as a problem. 
And ultimately, we are afraid of success because we do not feel we deserve to be happy. Really, that's what it is. And this is something that not a lot of people are aware of. I'll go over this on the next slide, okay? But to be fair, none of this matters if you just follow the instructions anyway, okay? If you, um, let's say you're a bad artist, okay? You suck at art. You have no artistic ability whatsoever. I I'm that way, okay? I have virtually no, like, visual art, painting, drawing. I'm awful. Um, but if I buy a paint by number, you know, the paint by numbers where it's like a, it's a painting or something and all the little parts have like a, a number in there and like every, every, like every word says 18, you paint yellow and like six is black, like whatever. Um, if you do that, when you're done, what you have will look like whatever it's supposed to look like, because that's, those are the instructions to, to arrive at that final result. So it's the same way, right? Like you can be anorexic and have this problem and blah, blah, blah. But if you follow those actual three steps that I laid out that like, I can't make any more simple for you to actually do. If you actually do those things, like really let's, let's think about it in as simple terms as possible. If you're anorexic, just eat, just eat meat and eggs. That's it. That's, that's the solution to your problem. Really? Like you take the food, you put it in your mouth, you chew it, you swallow it and you repeat that until you're done. That's it. Okay. That is, that is following the instructions. If you don't want to do that, if you choose not to do that, then at least acknowledge the fact that you are choosing to not do that. And then, okay, fine. But like, don't ask me to participate in your illness, you know, like, or anybody else. Is that really fair to ask other people to participate in your like illusion of not having a choice when you're clearly choosing to not eat? I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> this is something that I did the other day that I found useful and I thought I would include it in here because I think it can be applied to fitness as well, even though I can't really do this. Well, maybe I can do it with fitness, um, maybe flexibility or something. Anyway, get a pen and paper and write down all of the reasons you don't deserve to solve this problem. It's not really all the reasons you don't deserve to solve this problem. It's write down all the reasons you don't think it's possible that this problem can be solved. Okay. And when you've done, when you're done writing down all the reasons, debunk each one with a logical counter argument. For example, um, I'm not really that skinny. You know, I'm, I'm not really as skinny as everyone says I am. I'm fat, whatever. To debunk that, because I'm, I'm sure you know, like deep down, you, you know that like you shouldn't see your ribs, right? Like you know that like you shouldn't see your fucking clavicle like sticking out like this much. Um, so, so right, you know, like, well, actually, you know, somebody sneezed on me and I had a bruise for like three weeks. So maybe, maybe I really am too skinny. Um, anyway, just debunk every single one. Okay. Now I did this the other day, all right, because <clears throat> I just recently came back to a job that I hadn't done for two years, selling products, hair straighteners, curlers, whatever at kiosks and malls. Okay. I did this for many years and I and broke, ran out of money. So I came back to this job and, um, this past week I've been doing it and I've had my ups and downs. And the other day I was having an especially challenging day and my, my manager was working with me and he stopped a customer for me to kind of like get me back in the flow of things. Cause he, he could tell that I was like, I was off. Right. So he stopped this customer for me. I went through the motions and they ended up buying. Okay. Despite the fact that they ended up buying, it did not solve my problem. Okay. It did not cure my, uh, lack of belief in myself because I still had these problems. I still had these ideas in my head about why I didn't think it was possible that I would have a good day and that I would make money. So it didn't really like, it was nice to make the sale, but like it, it didn't really do it for me, you know? And I ended up taking a break. I took my phone. I was like, all right, fuck it. I might as well try this like strategy that I heard. <clears throat> so I wrote down all the reasons why I didn't think it was possible that I'd have a good day. You know, people weren't stopping for me. Um, I wasn't as good as I used to be. I've been on a break from this job for too long. I never worked in this mall before. I don't really know the like personality profiles of the people that live in this city. Like I just went until I couldn't really, I literally couldn't think of any more. And then for every single one, I would just give a counter argument, not even necessarily one that I believed. Like for example, um, I haven't done this job in two years, right? That's true, right? And I could totally like buy into the fact, haven't done it for two years, therefore that means that I suck and I won't make any money today. 
Or I can make a counter argument and say like, okay, so what? If you still work all day, every, you know, consistently, you'll still make sales. You know, it's a numbers game. That could be a perfect counter argument too. It's a numbers game. If you continue to work, a certain number of people will buy. Just like that lady that bought from me, you know, 10 minutes before I started doing this exercise, when I gave like the most like least, most impassioned demo impassioned is lack of passion anyway i gave her a fucking weak ass demo she actually bought you know another one i don't know the customers i don't know the personality profiles of the people here um at the end of the day it doesn't matter because some people will buy no matter what some people won't so you just gotta sit through the shitty ones anyway i went down the list went through every single reason and went back to work 10 minutes later and as i was standing there and like working, getting back into it, these reasons would pop up in my head periodically. And then I would automatically think of the counter argument. <coughs> I would automatically think of the counter argument and it would kind of like immediately neutralize the, the, uh, the reason. And then I, the punchline of the story is that I continued working and I fucking crushed it. And I sold more than anybody on that kiosk that day. And I sold more than anybody in the company that day, which is what I should be doing anyway, because I'm have a lot of experience and I don't know if I'm better than everybody at this company, but I, I kind of think I am anyway, whatever, try it. It works. I've only done it that one time, but you can also try it. Give it a shot. See if it works for you. Okay. Last slide. Your way doesn't work. Try mine. Um, I, I will tell you this, this like therapy culture, victim mentality, all in, it doesn't work. Okay, it does not work. Like at the end of the day, what works is action. Taking taking right action is what works. Okay. You know if you're anorexic, you know what you should do. You know you should be eating food, really. If you're broke, you know you should be fucking working. Okay. If you're fat, you know you should be exercising. Right? Straight up, really. If you're bulimic and you're like sticking your toothbrush down your throat to puke, you know you should not be doing that. All right. That that is the right action to take is doing those things or not doing those things in the case of bulimia. That is the answer here, okay? Did I really need to make a 45 minute video or hour long video to like explain this in such a complex way to you? Maybe, I don't know. But the point is that the, the therapy culture, the like Facebook group, you know, let's hug it out culture, that does not work. People do not seem to get like lasting uh, recovery from that. Whereas if you try my method, you'll feel better instantly and you'll experience results immediately within a week, right? Like try, try it for two weeks. Really? Honestly, if you can commit to just, how about this? Try it for a day. Oh my God. How about this? How about this anorexic people of YouTube go to the supermarket right now. Okay. Just go right now. All right. And buy, I don't know, a steak. But if you don't know how to cook, I'm going to fucking make it easier for you. I'm going to make it even easier for you. Go to a restaurant right now. Go to a restaurant, order a steak, and eat it. That's it. Do that every day for a week. I should make the fucking anorexia steak challenge. Go to a restaurant. You don't have to cook. Do you have like $15 for a steak at a restaurant? Go to Outback or something. Go to a restaurant, buy a steak and eat it, eat it every day for a week and tell me you don't feel like a million dollars, all right? That could be the only thing you eat all day. Go ahead, try it. Join Planet Fitness, go to the gym, lift weights, eat once a day. You know, you're gonna like try and get your advice from other sick people, from these like hot done up girls on YouTube who show you what they eat in a day. Oh, I had some, I had these like, you know, honey mustard rice crackers and i like to put some peanut butter on it because peanut butter is good for protein and i had some like green juice and oh let me make my smoothie oh i love putting the extra raspberries in there okay fine you know it's it's fun to think that you're like participating in the same things that like hot girl celebrities are participating in and not that you're taking advice from god some dude with like a hoarse voice and shitty lighting and bad audio on his like 45 minute video that you somehow watched um but like straight up, like, are you trying to fix your problem or are you trying to, you know, participate in the circle jerk popularity contest of YouTube? Should I just 
get better lighting and make better videos? I should. I know. I should, really. But if you're one of the, like, 200, 300 people who end up watching this, just give it a shot. If you're anorexic, really, just try it. Do you know somebody who's anorexic who would maybe benefit from, from hearing this alternative solution? Just try it, really. S send them the video. Okay, Send them a link to the video. Email it to them. Text it to them. Whatever. Um, other than that, it's the last slide. Other than that, let's go back to the yeah the three steps. Um, other than that, if you guys have any questions, if somehow this is like not clear to you, what you need to do uh, to fix the problem, I guess leave me a comment. Leave me a comment anyway. Ask me a question. Tell me what you think. Um, also, any of you, I, I don't I don't like asking people for anything. I mean, I do, but. I don't know, I feel bad like asking subscribers because like what if nobody responds? It's so embarrassing. But if, if I have given you some sort of like health advice that has helped you regarding eating disorder shit, leave it in a comment. Let me know. Maybe maybe I'll make another, maybe it'll give me an idea for another video. I just, after the, the recent batch of videos that I did where I'm like angry, that was after a few days of like working this job and just coming home and like getting out all my aggression in the videos. So anyway, the point is this, eat meat, eat eggs, eat once a day, do resistance training. If you're anorexic, do that for a week, just do it, just try it. Okay, you don't need to understand why, you don't need to believe that it's right, you don't need to actually agree with me or even like me, just do it, just try it and see if it works, okay? That's it, that's your challenge. Got any questions, let me know, peace.